you know, picked off real easily, and somebody pocketed a whole lot of money. And, well, and Dan, I understand in your research you also uncovered where uh, Congress, Congressman John Klein uh, obstructed uh, reform uh, in his position uh, at the Department of Education. Tell us a little bit about that. That that's actually that's actually the main his main uh, uh, act, and you know his main main part in this whole thing is he obstructed any kind of reform for re, for the for-profit universities. Now, you know, the, the, the United the States government closed down Corinthians College, I think, the, uh, two years ago, and they were also involved in these sort of uh, practices. But Klein was able to keep ITT up and running until about just two months ago. And he's set to retire and... Uh, there's going to be no. There's not going to be any. There's no implications. There, there's nothing. There, there's going to be no. Nothing done against him. He, he's not going to be indicted. He's not going to be. He's not going to be thrown out of Congress. He's going to retire quietly, and uh, with a whole lot of money in his pocket, I'm sure. Um, he did obstruct uh, any kind of reform. It was a very powerful position to be head of a committee in Congress. Is a very powerful, especially when you're talking billions of dollars every year. And uh, he was a, a defender of the industry, you know, uh, all all the way up until just the other day. And now he has nothing to say about it or say for himself. Um, On the other hand, apparently two executives with ITT are being charged with fraud. So apparently some people are taking the fall in this. So what what are you observing in regards to that? Well, yeah, uh, there's a couple of guys that that are top executives. Uh, uh, one of them uh, is Kevin Madani and Dan Fitzpatrick have been charged with fraud. Uh, I know that the Securities Exchange Commission has been after them for quite a while. I I, I want to say that that that's who I, I don't know who's charging with fraud exactly. Let's see. Uh, yeah, they they all right. Well, they they've been charged. All right. Modani is the, the former chief executive officer, and the current chief financial officer, Daniel Fitzpatrick, hid the company's poor performance from investors and covered up the financial fallout of two ITT guaranteed student loan programs, according to the Securities Exchange complaint. So I, you know, it almost sounds it almost sounds like ITT was being run by the mafia. Basically, organized crime at the highest level to take over the whole daggum operation. Yeah, yeah, and and we're talking about maybe fifty-seven thousand students, one hundred and thirty campuses, eight thousand employees are now out in the street with nothing. Well, and, there should be a huge Senate House investigation in the whole daggum thing. Should be televised like Watergate. I mean, you know, come on, this sort of thing should have the American people outraged, particularly. The students who've been victimized, and this has been going on for decades from what I'm reading and seeing. This is not new. You saw it a year and a half ago. You saw the handwriting on the wall, and it had been going on prior to that. Well, you know, and here's the thing is that that federal officials say that the the two that I just mentioned uh, in the current company, ITT Educational Services Incorporated, created two in-house lending programs called PEAKS and CUSO as off balance sheet loans, meaning debts that weren't included on the company's balance sheet. So they're cooking the books too. So they're yeah. not only, yeah. they're not only cheating the students, but they were cheating their, their shareholders. And they were they were lying to the shareholders, they're lying to their investors, they're lying to the federal government, and this whole mess is estimated is going to cost the taxpayers five hundred million in discharged loans by the by the United States Department of Education because they do have a discharge program for schools that go out of business before students are able to, uh, to complete their degrees. And they also have a discharge program for students who cannot transfer their credits to other institutions. So all those loans are going to be defaulted on and the money is going to be given back or the, the debt is going to be discharged and you, me, and anybody else that pays tax money in this country is going to pick up the tab for this. Well, see, that's outrageous. And the American people are tired of this. I mean, this is not unlike 
Bernie Madoff and the banking scandal. I mean, this is high-level white-collar crime once again, and the guys at the top, including our dear Congressman John Klein, getting away with it. I mean, come on. And what about that uh, president of ITT, uh, John Mayer, that was being compensated $8 million a year? That's more than uh, a president at Harvard or Stanford or Yale would make, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe maybe all three of them put together, probably more than all three of them put together. Uh, it, yeah, it, you know, uh, they had extreme, the two executives had extremely close ties to, to Representative Klein, and he was their ticket, basically, in Congress. And uh, at any time, you know, he could have, you know, put something, you know, said something to, to, to further investigations into the wrongdoings, but instead he covered up for it. He took money. He took campaign donations in excess of a million dollars for this. And you're right. It's it's, it's about as big a scandal as Enron or any of the other white collar uh, crimes that have been committed in the United States against the United States people. And you know we're we're, we're in a we're in a United States economy that's twenty trillion dollars in debt as it is. Now we're going to add another half a billion to that right now because of this no this fiasco. Oh. That's indefensible. Absolutely indefensible. Do you have any do you have any considerations for joining the students and helping them achieve debt forgiveness? Oh, absolutely. That's why I'm on. That's why I'm on the phone tonight. That's why I'm on the radio tonight talking about this. I, I'm all for you. I, I I support I support you know you getting your debts discharged. Discharged. Uh, you know I support students going forward finding a community college. Or uh, you know a, a university, a small state university, and and if you have to start all over again, well, gosh, that's just part of life. Sometimes, some sometimes all of us just have to start, take our losses, and start all over again. It's well, not two fair. Things that, two things that I got no problem starting over. The only right. problem I have with starting over is the fact that you know 500 percent of my lifetime allotment of Pell Grant has been used up, so I pretty much have no money to be able to do that. And, and I read on that tonight too. And uh, you for this, helping students, are you aware of insideforprofit.org? dot uh, org? I no, I'm not. But you know, you brought up a, a good point about your Pell. The, here's another thing the Department of Education is saying about about ITT and the Pell Grant. Your 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 student loan debts can be discharged, but your Pell Grant will not be reset. You I have know. six years of Pell Grant. So you're not going to get a reset Pell Grant. So you're right. You're going to have a heck of a hard time financing your next level of education. You probably have to do it through more loans. But the good thing is get the loans discharged that you had under ITT and start over again with some federal loans at a good school. I'm trying to get discharged, but I graduated before they went bankrupt. Now, that may be a problem then. There's going to, that, that's another thing that you're going to have to address on the United States Department of Education's website addresses that, and I don't think you're going to be eligible for discharge. Um, probably not, but I'm hoping. Um, I mentioned insideforprofit.org. Um, supposedly it's a group of uh, legal activists and some lawyers, supposedly, where they're basically looking for people who used to work at ITT and they're familiar with their practices, and they're looking for ITT employees to come forward. Right. And, and and what is this again? Insideforprofit.org. Yes, sir. Okay, uh, I'll take note of that, and I'll, I'll visit that website this evening. Then. And Thank I you. Appreciate that. I, I appreciate that because I'm very much on your side. I I got into higher education not for the money, obviously, uh, because uh, you know I believe in passing on. Uh, you know, education has done a lot for me, and uh, I'm a big 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 advocate of of bettering oneself through education. I have since I got out of high school, and uh, and uh, it, it's magic. You know, it's a, it's the difference between day and night when you get that real piece of paper, and you go out there and you get a real good job, and you get a lot of respect and all that. And, and I'd like to see people that that have been harmed by this uh, by this institution go forward with their lives and, and get that get that that piece of paper and that lifestyle that comes along with it. No, nah, that, that's nice to hear. Um... It, it's nice to know that there's some of the some of the faculty and administration that had issues with it. I just 
I wish somehow that the, the ITT faculty and staff that's currently suing ITT corporate itself, if there would be some way that their information can be brought over to us, but I don't know if anyone is even investigating that. Well, you know, you I know, mentioned earlier in the show that I think there should be a House Senate full-scale investigation televised hearings, you know, something on the order of, of uh, Watergate or the Clarence Thomas <laughs> hearing. You know, let's go ahead and give this the national attention it deserves because it's on such a huge scale. I'd like to see Trey Gowdy talk to Representative Klein for a little while. <laughs> that would be an interesting talk. Yeah, I, I, you know, I agree, Rich. I'd like to see this brought before a congressional hearing, and I'd like to see Representative John Klein question extensively about his part in all this uh, this debacle here. Uh, you know, it's a very, very grim day in the United States, and, uh, you know, we would watch the, the, the commercials on television. I, I just got back from Nebraska, ma'am, and we would we'd watch the commercials on cable television up there, and uh, my wife is a, a former marketing major, and she say, "You see the marketing they're doing here. You see the time frames. They're, they're placing the ads during times when people, obviously, that don't work or aren't working full time, are are watching television. And this is not an accident. This is on purpose. They're picking up on the people that currently have a lot of idle time." And that might want to do something with their life. You know, she said, don't you notice that you don't see it in prime time? You're not seeing the commercials, like, between 7 and 11 at night. You're seeing them during the day when there's, like, you know, uh, single, single mothers and people that are, you know, for one reason or another currently not working or, or, or underemployed will see these commercials and they look really slick and they've got all this modern equipment and, and, they're, and they've got testimonials from supposed former students who are probably paid actors and uh, they, they, they snookered everybody. They just based, there's no other word for it. They stole from people. That's, that's just it. They just stole from people. That, that's sad, but that's what, that's what happened. I guess I have one last question for you. Um, ASICs, the accrediting agency for ITT, um, I, I've been looking and learning about them for the last week or so here. What is your opinion on maybe the accreditation system needing to be reformed so that way schools can't make a system that basically gains something that depended upon academic honesty? Because ASICs, I, I don't know if you're aware, but pretty much the board that the committee board that runs them is members are all from that are employed by for profit schools. Right. So yeah, so it's the the fix is in is what you're saying. Um and you're right, there are, there's two different kinds of accreditations in the United States. The national and regional. National, regional is has a more loose standard. And that's what allowed the national accreditation, right? Allowed the for profit ITT to operate. A regional accreditation board, say you're in Nebraska, the regional uh, accreditation board that accredites the University of Nebraska wouldn't even entertain accrediting an ITT. You understand? But the yeah. national accreditation board, like you said, with employees from the for-profit schools, they're all for it because that's money in their pocket. So that's probably where the, the, the government has to look, the one of the places they have to look the hardest is the way we do accreditation in this country for universities and colleges or institutions of higher learning. I can't I can't call this institution a college or a university. It's not. And I was told you're not a professor. You know, you're an instructor. You're an institution of higher learning either. What's that, ma'am? I don't think IDT can be called a place of higher learning either. No, and that's probably a the reputation of what had already taken a hit before this, and now it's all moved out. I don't think they'll ever be. Well, they won't be back. You know, I would I would say it'll be a name change and everything else when the new investors uh, reopen. I don't I don't think there'll even be any association. I don't think anybody would want any association with IT and T with all this bad press. Do you, Dan? Uh, no, you know it, it it's it's one of the things where um, it, it it's basically became, and, and let me tell you, like I said before, there was a time, you have to realize it's been in existence for like over 50 years. 
there was a time when ITT was reputable, but in the, in the millennium, you know, in the last 15 or 16 years, it's not the case. It got taken over with, by a bunch of criminals, you know, a bunch of executives that were just lining their own pockets, making fortunes, and, uh, you know, and they found a business model that allowed them to do that on federal money. You know, it's a lot like how a lot of big uh, medical institutions rip off Medicare. You know, it, it's just like one of those things where the federal government isn't always watching as hard as they should be. And, and you know, it's just, you know, in, in a lot of ways, I want to say it's it's just as much as, as uh, fault of the federal government, the United States Department of Education, and as, as the crooks that ran the institution. And, and John Klein ran interference with his powerful position uh, as co committee chairman. And when you've got a guy in there like that, and this is one of the things that we're trying to do away with in this election, uh, is a career politician that pockets money for his own self and his cronies and does nothing for the citizens of the United States of America. You know, And this is a prime example of the, some of the things that have to leave Washington, D.C. immediately. You know, and, hopefully in November we'll get rid of some of these people. Who knows? And then the, that system continues. I don't know if you're aware, but ITT filed Chapter 7 bankruptcy yesterday in which they're going to be absolved of any debts they owe, and the owner and operators of it, well, high-level operators, will be able to still keep all their money. Oh, that's what, you know, that's what I just said. Like, you oh, know, I didn't they, hear get fine, they get fined $500,000, and you and you just made $40 million in the last five years. Is that a lot of money to you? That's, well, you a know. lot of money to anyone. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's, good, it's going to be a big mess. There's a lot of lawyers picking up on, on all sides. Well, they're, they're putting the average American exactly. becomes more outraged by this type of thing. Yeah, and it should be. And, and uh, there's... There